Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Jade! Jade! That's the cause of it all. You've got to get hold of yourself, Mr. Ramey. Your wife's wife said she was in trouble. That's why we brought the bold venture all the way down here to Cortez. Not that we minded. In Havana, you and your wife were guests at our hotel. We paid in advance and we enjoyed having you. Maybe if we spoke to Mrs. Raymond... Oh, you people, what do I have to do to make you understand that wire Martha sent? The bold venture's all secure, Mr. Slade. Thanks, King. Hello, Mr. Raymond. King, make them listen to me. They've got to listen. We're listening. Did you ever see two pair of ears more cocked than ours? No, Miss Sailor. I've sailed the seven seas, been in climes so strange that your very flesh would chill would I speak of them, and never have I seen in my life such... <laughs> That's king for you. Ask him a simple question, you get a 16-inch performance on a 7-inch screen. Does it calm you, Mr. Ramey? Good. Now, tell us what that wire was all about. All right. Yes. Martha's in trouble. Go on. You know how much she likes Jade. Martha's crazy about it. Oh, Martha, Martha. Well, what happened to her? Gone. Martha's gone, disappeared. Help me find her. Find Martha for me. Here in Cortes, Mr. Slate, it's easy for the earth to swallow up whoever. This man, I believe. So do I. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Ramey. We'll find her for you. The taste of your mouth on my lips is bitter, mi alma. Forgive me, Ima. Forgive me. He'll find her. Shannon will find her. Then he'll know we murdered her. I, I played it all wrong. I should have sent him away. I should have said Martha was all right. That, uh... that would have been the way of a blind child, mi alma. No. It will be with this Shannon as I told you. His dust will lie with the dust of the dead woman. What makes you so sure, Emma? Tell me, tell me. While you talk with Shannon and those with him, I arrange with the clerk at the Hotel Cortez. Arranged what? That the wife, Martha, was never with you at the hotel. That you were alone. Oh. This the clerk will say to anyone who asks. And that will rid us of Shannon? From the hotel, he will search in other places for the dead woman. We will see that he takes a path that leads to Progresso in Yucatan. And from there to the west, into a wilderness, into a desolation, into a place we know. But he'll find Martha. Let Shannon's dead hands try to lift her, to bring her to us. You see me, Alma, how it can be. I tell you, senor, I tell you again and again and again, I repeat myself. No such woman has registered at my hotel. Mr. Ramey said he registered here with his wife. Half of what Mr. Ramey has informed is the truth. And being half of the truth, the other half is a lie. Only Mr. Ramey hired a room, not so for his wife. All you have to do to convince us is show us your books, Chico. Why are you being so cagey about that? Cagey is my business. That is... You're going out of business, amigo. Bring out the register. I cannot. Please, senor, do not remove the arm from the socket. I will show you. Oh, the arm. The register, Chico. And I'll make the pain go away. You will do that? Oh, when? However, there is no register. The guests register upon a card, not upon a book. 
Here, senor. The cards from last week. Thanks. Now, well, let's see, Cordova. No, senorita, uh, por favor. Do the arm. rub a dub A rub a dub it is. You like it? Mm. Sure you do. Ah, here it is, sailor. Mr. Ramey's card. Doesn't say anything about Mrs. Ramey. Card says he registered by himself. Let's see. That's what it says. Uh, Chico, you didn't destroy the original card and forge this one, did you? This I did not do. No. Forever, no. It says here a two-bedroom suite. That's for two people, Chico. I will lead the way and show you why. Come with me. You will see why I have given Senor Remy a two-bedroom suite where there is only one. To all questions, there are answers. Here is the suite. Regard. Here is the bedroom, one. Lavender satin bedspread and a hot plate. To make the hot water. And regard, the next bedroom. Regard. Ah, torn apart, not even any plaster on the wall. Empty. Because it has never been used. Because my hotel is still being built. Beat me, senor. Both arms from the sockets. I have told you the truth. <laughs> Slate, I'm up to here with jade shops. There must be other places Mrs. Ramey found amusement. Like what? Like somewhere if you turn on the shower, cool water comes out. Like somewhere a girl could lie down and take off her shoes and wave her tootsies in a cool breeze. That is, if she could find one in this glass jar called Cortez. <laughs> other girls live for jade. You want only cool tootsies. In here, sailor, the last shop. Swear it. On your hot feet. Come on. <laughs> so, you have a scratch in the dark corners of the world, and finally you have come to Pedro, the jade seller to end all jade sellers. Swear it. When you die, senorita, you can tell your mourners you have tasted of the jade of Pedro. Hey, what's with you, Pedro? You've been taking morbid pills? You want jade? Or you have come to me to make of me an analysis. Let me feel your head bumps, kid. See, yeah. Sailor here sees all, knows all, except what's happened to Martha Ramey. You got a head bump for that, Pedro? That uh, Mrs. Ramey? Something has happened to her? We don't know. All we know is that she's disappeared. Ah, no. Disappeared? Oh. And she was my favorite looker. The time she has bruised in my shop. Bruised? You know, senorita, look around. Bruise. Try to buy a piece I would not sell her. This one in the case, for example. The white jade of a plumed serpent. It is the fruit of Mayan hands in the desert waste of Yucatan. How passionate it is. Look. Sigh. Desire over it. But no sale. <laughs> and if a girl wanted a piece like that, she might go to Progreso to pick the Mayan fruit. Look at me. I am not a girl. And I would. I did. I took the plane of Senor Kip and I flew... The plane to... of Senor Kip? Who? Where? In the strip of weed at the edge of the city. The transport to Progreso is such that one must beg of Senor Kip a wing of rice. Hi there. Is your plane? You want to go someplace, Jack? Nice plane. I always liked an AT-17. A great, Jack. Hi, baby. Hello. We're trying to find out about a Mrs. Martha Ramey. A Mrs.? Not usually, but what about it? Did you fly her over to Progresso? Me? Did I do that? You. Did you do that? Well, you're on Jack's side, huh? No, I lean toward you a little. What about Mrs. Ramey? Guess. Make a puzzle out of it. Bite your lip and wonder. Good day. Tell Jack likewise. Tough about us, baby. Now what? Looks like Kip Boy never heard of her. He's heard. He read a textbook once how sky tramps are supposed to act. Gaunt and tight-lipped with a shrug of the broad shoulders. If he hadn't heard the name of Ramey, he'd have just shaken his head without making a production out of it. Uh, I read the same book. You think Martha Ramey went to Yucatan? Maybe. I, I don't know. It looks like... Mr. Shannon! Mr. Val. 
Hey, what's Ramey doing here? Let's wait and find out, huh? Following us, maybe. Oh, I, I didn't expect to find you two here. If you were following us, you would have. Oh, no, I, I wasn't doing that. I had a hunch, an idea. That your wife had gone to Progresso. That's right, for my and Jade. I thought maybe that pilot, well, he, he's almost the only regular transportation across the Straits. Says he never heard of your wife. Oh. Well, well maybe she went another way. You're going to help me, aren't you? You're going to find Martha. How far to Progresso, Slate? A hundred miles across to Yucatan, then around the coast. What do you say we wait till morning, huh? It was nice of Ramey to get us a couple of cabanas right on the beach. Yeah, it was real sweet, real thoughtful. Now, oh, look, Slate. Don't look a gift cabana in the keyhole. He might have arranged for us to stay at that hotel with the hot plates and no plaster. I told you, I'm grateful. What do you want me to do, run back and kiss Ramey's hand? It bothers you about his wife, doesn't it? Yeah, it bothers me. Now, there's your cabana, sailor. Get some sleep. That trip across the Straits to Progresso is tough. Good night, Slate. Is it? Tell me about it in the morning, sailor. Well, what do you know? Sailor, come here. What is it, Slate? What's the matter? Lose your key? Now, look. Look what's nailed to my door. Why, it's a wreath. A funeral wreath. Yeah, look at this little card, all edged in black that was pinned to it. Go on, read it. Do not go to Progresso, Shannon. A grave waits for you there. We still going, Slate? What else? I want to see what they've written on my tombstone. <laughs> Good night, sailor. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. Okay, sailor, kill your motors. Now slide her in easy. Easy as she goes. Easy enough for you? Peachy, make her secure, King, and wait for us. If you will have need of me, you have but to shout my name. Don't worry, we will. Mm. So this is Progresso, huh? What's so Progresso about it? All I see are street beggars and dusty kids selling the jade of their sisters. They sell water here, too, sailor. Water? Kidding. Oh, I'll prove it to you. In that store across the street, the general store. They sell water, huh? What do you get for a chaser? Air to breathe? <laughs> On the house. You see that water barrel in the corner, sailor? The people lined up with old gasoline tins in one hand and ten centavos in the other, like the sign tells them to do? You wish you drink of water, senor? I will treat you. Ima will treat you. Golly day, what a glamorous and exotic chamber of commerce. Where did you get those divine jade earrings? The, the earrings? They, they are the gift of a tourist, of a, of a man who... They're the ones Mrs. Ramey wore in our hotel one night, Slate. She let me put them on. A girl never forgets little favors like that. Yeah. Ever heard of a Mrs. Ramey, Ema? A lady who had the same taste in jade you have? See, I have heard of her. She's the woman who went to the Mayan village of Choltepec, alone, in search of Mayan jade. We talk of it often here in Progresso. This village, this Chilte, uh, this Mayan borough, which way? See the main street, senor. Follow it to the west. If you lose your way, ask directions of a vulture. <laughs> Come in quickly. You came quickly 
to Progresso. The boy with the airplane, Yuma. The same one who brought Martha and me here. On the way over, he told me he had a conversation with Shannon. And? I gave him some money. Did Shannon show up yet? See, si. He is a fool who sniffs at his own dying and grins. Shannon and the senorita. They have left Progresso. You sent them to the village? As we agreed. It will not be long, Max. You will see. Whatever you say. Here, take the moccasins. Yes, yes, it'll work, Emma. It'll work. <laughs> a little boy, Max. You are that. A child who opens his hand to release the wings of death. Love me, Max. <laughs> How you doing, sailor? Tired? Want to rest? What will I rest on? A cactus bush? Now, don't let the heat get you down, sailor. Which reminds me, huh? I'm thirsty again. Take it easy on the water. There's not much left. Here's ten centavos. Now can I have a drink of water? <laughs> no, I didn't mean that, sailor. All I meant was... Here, drink all you want. I'm sorry, Slater. I don't really need it. It's just that a girl like me isn't cut out for safaris. I'm more a home-type girl. Give me a pair of mucklucks and a pipe with a man on the end of it, and I'm... I'm... You forgot to put the cat out, Slate. It's a jaguar. There, in those rocks. Freeze. He sees us. Don't miss, Slate. How close are you going to let him come? Right between the eyes. Well, it's not bad for a man who has to sight over a goose pimple, huh, sailor? I'll pin a sharpshooter's badge on you when we get to the village. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Stick close to me, sailor. I'll need you to make me a brave fella. village deserted. Not even a howling dog to give you the key to the city. We've knocked on every hut, Slate. Maybe that's what Mrs. Ramey did, too. Found the place empty, tried to get back home, and never... You know, what's that on the ground, Slate? Footprints. A woman's moccasins. Prints look fresh, too. Look what I got, Mom. A regular buffalo bill. Well, let's follow them, sailor. Come on. Hey, what do you know? A cave. They go right into this cave. Hey, run, sailor. Into the cave. Run. What happened, Slate? All of a sudden, we're staring at a stone wall where a light used to be. It's a landslide, sailor. Seal the opening. Care for the two-bit tour through the caverns of Chiltepec? Follow me, madame. Slate, you want to know something? I'm scared too, sailor. Sailor, watch it. He almost went into that pit. Slate, hold me. Hold me. You all right? Sure you are. What are you shivering for? What's to worry about? A small hole in the ground. So you'd have fallen, so you'd have skinned a knee. Look, I'll drop a rock over. I'll show you. It isn't very deep. Watch. Go ahead. Shiver a little more. I'm okay. Now, take it easy around this pit here. Hunch against the wall. Hey. Now you're all right. I am? Now, don't worry about it. Tom Sawyer got lost in a cave and he got out of it. Tom Sawyer had Mark Twain. Slate, are you with me? Around the bend, sailor. Don't do that again. It's an underground river. That's right. And look, just ahead. Sunlight. Let's go get a tan. Now, take it easy. This shelf of rock gets too narrow to walk on here. Hold my gun. Don't be crazy, Slate. We want to get out of here, don't we? Take the gun. Come on in, sailor. The water's fine. 
Shallow, too. Okay. I could drink this river alive. Just be careful. The underfootings are pretty slippery. Ah, I never saw that sun looking pretty. Now watch it. This river goes underground here. If you hold on to that rock, I'll climb up and give you a hand. Okay, sailor. Ah, how does it feel to be outside, kid? Sailor, I'm talking to you. Look, over there, flung against that boulder. Mrs. Ramey, dead. She's been... <coughs> duck sailor. <coughs> Just hug the ground. Hey, give me that gun. You see anybody? Yeah. Yeah, behind that rise. Hey, don't look, sailor. Just take my word for it. Hi, Max. Hot, isn't it? <coughs> yeah, Max wants to play. You get him? He's running to those rocks. Ah, I think I got his canteen, sailor. Now he's in the same shape we are. There's enough water down there to flood a battleship. That's right. Now it's only a question of who's going to be alive to drink it. How do you like the nights in Yucatan, sailor? This hot wind, the howl of that animal. Man over there with a gun, no water. And you know what? What? I got a book back home that's overdue at the library. <laughs> How many cartridges do we have left? Well, there's one in the chamber of the carbine. The rest got fouled waiting that river. Well, I'm sorry I ever got you into this, sailor. Don't think about it. I'm in this with you. I wouldn't want it any other way. Sailor. I know what's on your mind. You're going to make a run for it to that water. That's right. I can't stop you, can I? That's right. We're not going to die like this. Maybe Max and his gun are asleep. I'll be back. <laughs> they weren't sleeping. Sailor, wake up. Wake up. Mm -hmm. The sun's up. Now it's my turn to sleep. All right. Here's the rock I slept on. It's nice and warm. Thanks. Hey. Hey, do you see what I see? Mm. Well, it's either a mirage or Max is waving a white handkerchief on the end of his gun. Don't trust him, Slate. I don't. But if he wants a truce, let's see what he's got in his mind. Throw away your gun, Max. You too, Shannon. Then we'll have us a drink of water. A truce? Sure. I trust you, Shannon. Just you. You can take water back to the girl. Okay. Take the gun, sailor. Hi, Shannon. Good and thirsty, eh? Yeah, that water looks good. Have some. Ah, after you. Thanks. Ah, it's cool, Shannon. Go ahead. Take some. This whole thing was a plant to get us here, wasn't it, Max? Have some water. Killed your wife. Got us here, set that slide. That's right. Have some water. Drink. All right. Ah. You're not going to louse it for me. I didn't think of a knife. You should have. I'll kill you. Now, Shannon, this knife against your throat... Your head in the water and you'll... Ah! I guess I'm just lucky, Slate. One shot left. I'm not a very good shot, you know. How good do you have to be? Come on, you probably need a drink of water. Slate. Yeah? Hey, 
What's that? Some girls wear mink, some wear sable. I wear jaguar. Oh, that's why you had me skin it and bring it home. Mm Mm-hmm. You mean you're going to go out like that? In jeans and a plaid shirt and a jaguar stole? I'll be the rage of the Prado. And that's the most exclusive boulevard in Havana. Is it warm? I never heard a jaguar complain of the cold, did you? (laughs) Come here. Was that warm? You're better than a fur piece any old day. Throw me over your shoulders, sailor. We'll kill him on the Prado. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, together in Bold Venture.